Welcome to English Practice Stories. Hello, my dear friends, how are you? I'm a middle-aged woman living in New York. People say that a child is only your child when it's under your roof, but once he is out of reach, he would be a stranger. But I didn't know that my own son would become like that. For over 30 years, I raised my son with all my devotion, but who knew that he would grow up to be worse than a stranger? After all, it was me who raised him, so it is embarrassing for me to reveal it, but if I don't talk about it even this way, I feel I would become ill. Before starting my story, please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon to meet us again. Let's start the story. My husband and I spent nights in tears for so long before we were able to have our son. Other people have kids so easily, three or four even, before my husband and me, that was very difficult. Nowadays, medicine has advanced so much that doctors can find out the reason for infertility or able to have test tube procedures, but 30 years ago, things were much different than now. It was very different especially because my mother-in-law was so superstitious. After two years of marriage, I still didn't get pregnant. Then, my mother-in-law went to see a fortune teller to get a good luck charm to be put under my husband's pillow. As if that wasn't enough, she made me hold a seance to someone I had never known, telling me that her ancestor who died early was holding on to the umbilical cord and wouldn't let it go. When that didn't work, she started looking for another wife for my husband, but when my husband protested against it, she couldn't make it happen. Because she nagged my husband so much, I started thinking about whether I should just leave him to make life easier for everyone. So I packed my things secretly away from my husband and came out of the house to leave him when a miraculous thing happened. In front of our front gate, there was a newborn baby wrapped in a blanket. At first, I thought someone had left a bundle of clothes at our doorsteps, but I found that it was a baby because I heard a cry. I looked around to see if someone had just put the baby down temporarily, but there was no one in the alley. At that moment, I thought that it might be a gift from God taking pity on my husband and me. I was afraid that others might see me, and I quickly went inside with the baby in my arms. The baby in the blanket must have been out of it for a long time because his body was cold. It was fortunate that it wasn't winter, because if I had discovered him late, something terrible might have happened to the baby. When my husband came home from work, he saw the baby on our bed and looked very surprised. Why wouldn't he? It wasn't even a puppy who got lost, but a baby that belonged to someone else. Unlike me, who lost my mind when I first saw the baby and immediately brought him in, my husband told me that we should immediately report to the police. He said how desperately the baby's parents must be looking for him. I knew we should, but honestly, I didn't want to. Honey, let's not do that. How about we raise him ourselves? As you can see, the parents intentionally abandoned the baby. Otherwise, why would they leave their baby on our doorsteps? They must have reasons so that they couldn't raise the baby on their own, so they left the baby in front of our door. So let's just raise him. If they want to get their baby back, they would come back, so until then, let's raise him. Even if we report the baby to the police, they would only take him to the orphanage. 
It would be a lot better for the baby to be here than in an orphanage, right? My very adamant husband saw the baby's wiggling tiny fingers, which made him move. At night, we made a big fuss to bathe the baby together. The baby's tiny fingers held onto my husband's fingers so tightly, which just melted my husband's heart right then. Even though the baby made a fuss crying all night, perhaps because of the change of his usual bedding, my husband and I were very happy. I thought this must be the joy of living. Our house, which had been so quiet as a temple, became noisy with the baby's cries in our laughter. Not only that, but my husband, who never even laughed at any funny comedy shows on TV, smiled constantly. But the greater the joy, the greater the worry. It was because I was worried that the baby's parents might come to get their baby back. But fortunately, or unfortunately, two months passed, but we had no contact from the baby's parents. So after discussing it with my husband, we decided to register the birth of the child. My husband and I researched on the internet to name the baby. My husband and I wrestled for a while and came up with the name Moses per Bible. After registering our baby on the birth certificate, it really felt like he was our child. I felt it could be a perfect crime if those around us never found out he was an abandoned baby. Honey, later, if he found out that he was abandoned, wouldn't it be hard on him? Now that we put him on the birth certificate, why don't we just raise him as if he was our child? That way, he won't be pointed at by others, and he could receive love from both of our families. My husband listened to me that made him think deeply about it. Then, he said he would take up the cross. At first, I didn't know what he was talking about. Let's say I gave birth outside. It's practically impossible that you were pregnant with him. So it would be better if at least he has my blood. Only then, my mom would accept him as her grandson, wouldn't she? You should talk it over with your mom and take care of her. Usually, my husband was very conservative and frustrating, but he was quite the opposite this time. It was for our son, so he didn't mind taking the fall for it. That's how we committed the perfect crime. For several years, my mother-in-law had been treating me badly because I couldn't get pregnant, but she changed overnight by 180 degrees being so nice to me when I said I would raise the baby as if he was my own, even though my husband had him outside of our marriage. She even gave me her favorite ruby ring by taking it off from her finger and putting it on my finger. However, my mom and dad were against it. Even if I was the infertile one, they were displeased that my husband had a baby outside of our marriage. Still, on behalf of our son, my husband endured all of that shame and let it pass. Even though he was my husband, I wondered if he was a saint or something. That's how our couple lied to the whole family and raised our son, who dominated the love from my in-laws. As much as he was loved, he grew up as a child who knew how to give love, too. So my husband and I couldn't be any happier. Our son grew up never giving us any trouble. He studied hard and always maintained a top ranking, never missed being the class president in school. My in-laws said that he was smart because he took after my husband, who was a college professor. I smirked inwardly at those words, but they were praising our son, so I didn't feel bad. 
Our son went to a prestigious university that was difficult to be admitted and quite capable, as he got a solid job after he graduated. Everyone envied him because he was so perfect. When he was entering marriageable age, he found a pretty bright and got married early on. But in life, there are always changes. My husband passed away from an illness, and a lot of things started to change. Once my son started his own family, he wasn't very friendly to me any longer. When my husband was alive, he visited us so often, but after my husband died, he only showed his face on a holiday. When I complained in front of my sister-in-law, she said, I can't believe you. Don't people say that your child is only your child under your roof? Everyone is like that with other families too. What do you expect when he had never given you any trouble all this time and grew up so well? So stop being so greedy. There is no such sound like Moses. At that time, I thought I was just a narrow-minded who was just grumbling over nothing. But I learned that it wasn't so. One day, my son and his wife were to come over on my husband's memorial day. I didn't want to make things hard on my daughter-in-law, so I did all the grocery shopping and made all the food, but they didn't come without a phone call. Even after past ten at night, I called, worrying that they might have gotten into an accident, but the phone was off, so I held the memorial service by myself nearly at midnight. Just as I was ready to clear off the table, only then my son called. I'm sorry, Mom. My overseas trip got delayed and I just got in. You must have put in a lot of effort by yourself. I'm sorry. Since it is late now, I'll come by another day soon. What could I do since he said it was because of his work? However, he could have sent his wife alone if he couldn't come, so I couldn't understand. Why they couldn't have called me earlier? I was worried that something happened to you guys. If you couldn't come, you should have sent your wife. Did you do that on purpose, thinking I might put your wife to work? I felt hurt, but I just said it jokingly, but he burst into anger. Mom, are you saying that we are lying about it or what? We come every year and missed it just as once, so why do you make a big deal out of it? My wife is not a person who stays at home either. You are lucky, and you never had to work because of dad, but trying to work out of home is not that easy. So don't try to play the role of an old, uptight mother-in-law. You embarrass me. I couldn't say a word to what he was saying. It was shocking to hear my son calling me an old, uptight mother-in-law, and it left me speechless. It could be different depending on the person's point of view, but I didn't know how I acted to my son and his wife to make them feel uncomfortable. I put aside my hurtful feelings, and I felt more worried. After that incident, whenever I saw my son and his wife, I became cautious. I was worried that I might be the cause of a problem between them. When I was younger, I had oppressive treatment from my mother-in-law, so I didn't want my daughter-in-law to experience that. However, who knew that this kind of thinking would become poisonous? My son and my daughter-in-law were taking advantage of me when I was trying to minimize any burden on my daughter-in-law. If one becomes sick, one becomes weak, and I was no different. I had severe facial muscle twitching with pain around my eyes, so I went to a hospital near my house. 
Then, the doctor told me that I needed a CT scan. After seeing the result, the doctor referred me to a larger hospital for further testing. When I heard that, I was suddenly in fear. I wondered if it was a serious disease. A few days later, I went to the hospital, and the doctor said it was a meningioma. Although the tumor was not malignant, its location was not good, and the size was large and caused severe pain because the optic and facial nerves were being compressed, so my sense of taste had also gone down. An operation was inevitable. Then, you mean to open my head? There are other ways to treat it, but in the current patient's condition, opening the head will work better. Walk it over with your family and decide. It wasn't a simple laser surgery. And I was approaching near 60 years old and facing brain surgery by opening up my head. I felt great anxiety, so I called my son. It's not brain cancer, it's a meningioma. So why are you so worried about? We have advanced medicine these days, so that kind of surgery isn't even considered a major surgery even. Did you call about that? I thought he was making light of it because he was concerned that I would be worried, but when he said as if it wasn't a big deal, I felt somehow hurt. My son also preferred me to have the craniotomy to remove the tumor completely rather than having a laser treatment. I found out if you get the surgery, it is possible to register it as a severe illness, so that you can get more benefits from medical insurance. The copay will only be 5% of the total medical cost. He said my surgery would cost less than the cost of the laser treatments. His words made me feel sad for some reason. I never regretted giving him everything I had, but he seemed so much happier to choose a procedure that costs less. With my son's recommendation, I decided on the operation and started to have a consultation with the surgical coordinator. After I got admitted to the hospital, I finished all the preliminary tests. I was anxious before the surgery. Although it was not a risky surgery, because it was not a malignant tumor, but still, it was opening up my head so I felt scared. I wondered if I would never wake up on the operating table. After setting the surgery date, I couldn't sleep well at night. If I died, I worried about my one and only son who would be left alone without any parents or siblings. You might ask why I was worried when my son had a family of his own, but all parents feel that way. When his son is not over 60 years old, he is still a child to a parent. But my such feelings disappeared in a moment over an incident. What? You say you can't come to the hospital on the day of the surgery? I'm sorry, Mom. I thought you would mind, so I couldn't tell you earlier. But that day turns out to be my mother-in-law's birthday. And we had made plans to take her to Hawaii so we can't come to the hospital on the day of your surgery. Because we made a reservation on a budget fare for tickets and hotel rooms so we can't cancel them. Don't worry, I'll hire a caretaker for you to go ahead with your surgery. After all, the helper is a professional in that field. This would be better than either me or my wife to take care of you. For you, it's a good thing. I'll also get a two-person hospital room so relax and get the operation. Right, mother. If we are around you, you couldn't relax. So why do that and cause you any discomfort? 
It's not a major surgery, so relax and have the surgery so we can also not worry and have a good trip. Don't you think so, mother? What are you doing? Making whom that uncomfortable? It's not a big surgery so take it easy and have a good surgery. So you can travel comfortably, isn't it, mother? I was furious inside. I couldn't believe they were playing with their old mother in pairs. How could you say that now? What? It isn't a major operation. Then, what kind of surgery is a big operation for you? Must it be cancer or heart transplant or something that would kill me? You are so selfish. So that you guys can go on a trip comfortably. Do you want me to go through surgery quietly? Where did you learn that? In the meantime, I was worried that you will be uncomfortable so I was patient, but you are so unthoughtful. Mom, what are you talking about? What do I do? I paid money and called a caregiver and got you the private hospital room, so why are you complaining? Others might think you are on the deathbed or something. You shouldn't overreact like that. Right, you said it. Why didn't you get a private one-person room while you were at it? Why is it a room for two patients? Didn't you get it because my medical insurance covers up to a room for two patients? And what? You spent your money to hire a caregiver. Was that your money? That comes out of the money that I paid for the insurance for a caregiver. Since my medical insurance paid for the 95% of the medical costs and my private insurance covers the rest, so what did you pay for me that you act so almighty hot? Did you think I was that ignorant? That prestigious university you came out of? I also went there. So how dare you try to pull one over me? Just because I didn't want to hear that I was an old, uptight lady, I kept silent. But you are worse than me, being a young trickery tongue. I don't need any of you, so whether you go on a trip or emigrate to another country, to get out of here, you bastard. I'll consider that you never existed and live by myself. I was so angry that I poured out all the words that I had been suppressing. Then, my son and his wife lowered their tails and left my hospital room as if they were running away. I stayed alone in the hospital room and looked out the window. I saw the thick, scarlet sunset on the mountainside. It looked so beautiful and pitiful that I cried for a long time. It seemed to be like my life, which was slowly going down. Once, my life was shining like the sunlight. I had a bright youth, but suddenly, I was being treated like an old, senile lady to be shoved in the back room by my son. I was sad and lonely that I had become old. For a long time, until my cheeks got wet with my tears, I fell asleep watching the sunset outside the window. A few days later, I underwent surgery successfully. With the help of a caregiver called in advance, I spent nearly 15 days in the hospital. In the meantime, my son and his wife never came by. I guess they went on their planned trip with his wife's mother. But one day, before leaving the hospital, the insurance agent who managed my insurance called me. I told him that the surgery was successful and that it was healing well, so I was to be discharged the next day. Then he was a bit surprised, so I asked why he called me. 
He said my son called him the day before my surgery. I asked him why my son called him, and he said that my son suddenly asked bluntly how much life insurance I had. I thought it was possible to ask that. However, what followed was unbelievable. I don't know if I should tell you this, but your son asked about your death insurance in detail as to how much the total amount was. And if you died during an operation, if the payout would be higher, and who was the beneficiary of the life insurance. So I wondered if the surgery went wrong, but I am glad your surgery went well. My heart dropped when I heard that. It seemed my son had no interest in my surgery, but he was greedy over my death insurance payout. I hate to say this, but it is said that there are no thanks after taking care of their child. I never thought my own son would be like that. I was so disgusted that I changed the name of the beneficiary from my son to donate everything I had, including my real estate properties. Then, I let my agent know and told him that he had my permission to disclose it to my son. After I did that, my son and his wife rushed over to the hospital in no time. They even brought their son when they had always given excuses for not bringing him because he was busy with after-school programs and so forth. My daughter-in-law even brought the famous chicken soup from a popular restaurant. Mom, are you still angry for the last time? Still, your son is alive and well, so what is this about your donating everything? Please don't be angry and stop it. I even gave birth to your grandson. Do you really have to do this? If your grandson is struggling because of no money, would you be happy in your afterlife? Love should always flow down, so you should embrace it with your motherly love, shouldn't you? Even that precious grandson only comes by if he sniffs any money from me, so that's not a grandson. He's a stranger. I don't need a grandson like that. Even my only son, so precious to me, left my roof and changed like a bastard, so what could I expect more from a grandson? So don't dream of him, Bailey, and go back. I won't play the role of your mother anymore. Then my son smirked at me. Truthfully, I'm not even your real son. Am I not a son who was born outside of your marriage? I heard it all from my aunt. So because of you, my mom got abandoned from my dad, so you shouldn't expect me to act like your son. Aren't you too greedy? If you lived comfortably as a professor's wife for over 30 years, wasn't that enough? I don't even know where my birth mother is living, doing what? So stop playing the victim role because you make me sick. I was dazed at what he said. I faked his birth certificate so that he could have a happier life, but who knew it would come back and stab me in the back? That's not true. Your dad did not have you outside of marriage. I ended up telling him the secret that had been buried for 30 years and revealed the truth to my son. However, he didn't believe me. In fact, he was going to file a lawsuit to get back the inheritance that was left to me by my husband. When I saw him like that, I lost all my affection for him. I wondered if I raised him with such devotion all these years to see him treat me like that. So I told him to do whatever you wanted to do. Later, he took some of my husband's things left to do the DNA testing. Contrary to his expectation, the result came out that he was not my husband's son, 
and only then, he came to see me and knelt in front of me, begging for my forgiveness. It was frightening to see him because he reminded me of an alligator squeezing out his tears to snatch my money away. I think our relationship ends here. I don't expect to be repaid for raising you. I was happy enough to be your mother while raising you. But it ends now. I have nothing to give you or want to give you anything. For a thankless person like you, even if I gave you a million dollars, you wouldn't know how to be sincerely grateful. So don't hassle me and go back. I won't change my mind. I kicked my son out of my house. As I locked my doors and turned around, my legs gave in, and I collapsed on the floor. I felt so empty that all those years in the past were in vain. But time is medicine, so if time passes, would my broken heart be healed? I'm not sure yet. However, I'll try not to lose hope in people. The day I met my son was like a miracle, and who knows if it will come to me again. We never know when it comes to life. I believe all the parents in this world are truly amazing. I am eager to hear your perspective and learn from your input, so please do write your thoughts in the comments section. Thank you all for listening to my story. I wish for happiness in your family. Be sure to subscribe our channel and click the bell icon to meet us again and hear more stories like this. Bye for now. If you like our story, subscribe English Practice Stories channel and click the bell icon.